Okay. Are we said the Pledge of Allegiance? The Pledge of Allegiance is the flag of the United, United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Uh, changes to the agenda. Seeing none, we'll move on to public comments one. All right. Um, this is Nicholas Handy, communications coordinator. Um, policy is up on the screen um, for remote and in-person audience. Feel free to uh, just familiarize yourself with that policy before making any sort of public comment. If you are remote, you can do so by um, using the hand raise feature, which should be located at the bottom of whatever screen you're watching us at. You press that, we can um, allow you to speak first, last name, and town of residence before making any comment. Okay, thank you, Nick. So we'll give people a minute or two to look at that and weigh in. All right, I'm not seeing anybody at this time. Okay. Well, good. Then we'll have a second chance for public comments later in the meeting. And then that will bring us to the superintendent's report. All right. Well, this is the first week of I guess, you know, the beginning of it, but the first week of summer vacation. Last Thursday was the final day for our learners. We've had over the past couple of weeks, we've had the graduation of our seniors that was held over at the field. It was a very nice evening, a little windy, but um, it was uh, very nice. And then of course we had three other events this past week, which were um, two elementary or fifth grade celebrations, one at RMS, one at JGS. Those were both held the same evening. You know, in the future, I think we'll start to look at if we can separate them a little bit more so that more of us can attend, or is it that we can attend more of the sessions as opposed to having to jump from one location to another location. Uh, both were very nice. Um, and then uh, the eighth grade was the culmination right. of, of all of them. Uh, special thanks to Mr. Handy, our communications coordinator, who made sure that uh, especially the events at uh, the eighth grade graduation, the JGS, but they, especially the event at the high school, uh, the field took a lot more planning because of the distance away from the electrical outlets and so forth and trying to make sure that sound was just right and not getting feedback. So he's out there a long time. I think uh, it was reported that he had like 35 or 37,000 steps or something like that during the setup of that day going back and forth. It was pretty, pretty impressive. Um, we'll get the facts on that one later on uh, to make sure that we have the right, right number there, but it was pretty impressive. Uh, his patience was admirable. We uh, will be having an education committee meeting in the early or it will be sometime in July, I would uh, expect, and that will be looking at uh, data, student data. We'll try to meet this week with Leslie, my administrative assistant, to uh, again look at how we can develop good systems of data reporting, uh, getting the right type of software, which we might have um, already, but the right type of software to make sure that we are able to not just look at proficiency or not proficiency or even growth, but we want to look at uh, correlations. Um, again, very always very difficult to show causation with anything, but we can see some correlations between um, attendance, uh, how well they're doing in class, their grades and their uh, assessment results. Um, uh, perhaps, you know, even looking at down, not so much for a, an education committee meeting, but for some other types of purposes, looking at uh, absentee rate of um, teachers, you know, so how, how, many how many classes did they, you know, miss instruction from the core instructor during that time frame, whether it be for 
le leaving for professional development reasons or because of this year COVID had an impact on some of it. So just so that we have some information about that and, and kind of comparing and contrasting. Also looking at, we had a pretty good year with um, activities and athletics overall, but you know, what is that doing to our learners and their outcomes uh, from a, an academic standpoint? Because uh, when we think of student athletes, it's student athletes, they're students prior to being athletes. Not that one is, you know, the athletic piece can teach habits of mind perhaps better than they can teach within a school setting. Because if you're working on a team and you're being collaborative, you know, those, those um, skills uh, go on for life and are very valuable. That's what we look for when we hire people is are they collaborative? So wanting to make sure that kids are involved in team, team sports. And I think, uh, Charlie, you sent a, I think one time, we, or we talked about the fact that the, the research out there or the literature anyway, on team, of being involved in team versus uh, individual sports. So uh, it's, you know, we're, we're looking at that. We want to find out, you know, what's, what's the picture of the, of the really successful, or maybe we have a variety of pictures of successful JRMS, CHS, or uh, in the, the Jaffrey School District students. So what's, what's, what's that picture? What can we be communicating to families? Hey, if we do more of this, we'll get more of this. Or if we do less of something, we're gonna get more of something else. So I'm excited about the work that we're gonna be doing in the planning over the course of the summer. Okay, does uh, anybody have questions for Ruben? Okay. Well, Ruben, thank you for, for the update. Congratulations on the closing of the school year and the successful closing and the nice closing I'd ceremonies. Just like to say, remember what Ruben just talked about because we still have to have a dashboard next year. And uh, we want to identify the things that are important that will be on a dashboard so we can keep track of them and measure them. Mm -hmm. Good. Thank you, sir. You know, one, one thing that's also pushing that conversation more from another side of things is we will be, the state has now this, uh, finally chosen and, uh, and officially done so, ALMA as the student information system throughout the state. We've been holding off because Web to School was not a very good student information system, but rather, and we have, we'd actually um, met with ALMA before when we were looking at uh, LMSs, learning management systems, uh, because they do they're pretty powerful and they can do some of the things that the uh, learning management system can do. But the state has gone with that. So there's like a 34% reduction in cost because it's like it's kind of done in a statewide bid. And there are some add-ons. We're meeting with them, I think, Thursday, uh, Wednesday, Wednesday, just for a touch base, half an hour, hour meeting to talk about the software, uh, how what the implementation process should look like a year from now. So you know, not paying for Web to School, but paying for Alma in the, in the process. And then they have some added the add-ons that have to do with data dashboards that get updated in real time. So I don't know what, what it looks like or what it entails. It might just be individual student um, data, not you know, group information. Nevertheless, they chose that one because of the way they can grab data from the system for this for the purpose of uh, the statewide reporting. All right, well, good. That's big news too. So um, with that, I, we are on to the consent agenda. Make a motion that we accept the consent agenda. Okay. I'll second it. Thank you, Thank you Lisa. Thanks, Paul. Before you vote on that, can I just say thank you, Michelle Durand. So um, she's yes. given a lot to this, this organization and uh, I'm excited actually for when <laughs> And I wish she were going to be the writing teacher another year. Um, we had some very nice results in that reading writing uh, pilot that we did this year in sixth grade. And I think she's a large contributor to that, uh, that specifically, but also to the team. Mm -hmm. She brings, uh, she's, she's done a lot for, for the district. So she's thanks. She's a tremendous for asset and she's tried different things for us mm -hmm. and uh, she's accomplished quite a bit while she was here. Yeah. I agree. When I saw her name, I was sad to see her go. She's one of the best. 
loved working with her. Thank yeah, you, Michelle. Thank you for those comments. Yeah. Couldn't agree more. Well, all right. So <clears throat> on that note, all those uh, in favor of the motion? Aye. 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 Uh, opposed? Okay. So that carries 7 0. All right. Very good. And then we are on to policy review. Policy GBCD background investigation and criminal history records check. Second reading. I'll make a motion to adopt uh, policy GBCD. Okay. I'll second. Charlie, right, thank you, Christine. Any discussion? No, okay. All those uh, in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, that carries seven zero zero. And now board committee updates. Uh, Where do you want to start? <laughs> Why don't we start with uh, facilities? So facilities, uh, they met today. And there's a um, lot of progress going on right now with the HVAC systems. Um, a lot of the work getting done this summer. So we should finish all of phase one and he started on phase two. JGS has started on all the electrical work. Uh, I believe right now. Ridge has most of their materials on hand with exception of maybe one rooftop unit. So they should be able to get all those installed prior to the start of school year next year. Um, they said with the exception of that one, they might have to do it on nights or weekends to maintain proper safety. Um, right. uh, other stuff that we talked about uh, going out for new bids for plowing and sanding um so they're going to be uh creating a new wreck for that hosting it um probably anything else i missed you are actually john well I just mentioned that turner presumably well we we're, we've been assured that turner is working on the uh, assets assessments, mm -hmm. and they're scheduled to be done by the 30th of June. And uh, well, like you said, the big news was about the progress of the HVAC right. project. And, uh, and I believe that was with the transformers. Yeah, <laughs> well, we were fortunate with that, right? Right. We were told today that if you order a transformer right now, it's a year. We're giving you a date over a year mm. until you get. receive them. Yeah. Oh dear. Which is crazy, but That's we already have our crazy wait time. Yeah. So we got in before that uh, supply chain problem. Yeah. Good. And uh, we met with uh, Steve. Uh, you have, you know, I'm going to get his last name wrong. Just stick with Steve. <laughs> yeah, our, our, our clerk of the works. Yes, he seemed very knowledgeable and. Uh, very good. He, he told us uh, about not only the progress, but what are the things that he's looking at, that he, you know, the decision points or the places where we need to uh, be paying attention. And sounds like the project is in good hands. Oh, and the issue of the uh, dust collection was brought up in the wood shop. We're going to start looking into that as well uh, to get proper ventilation in the wood shop. That's right. Yeah, thank you. That's a that's a good point, and we're hopeful that you know maybe some uh, state or federal funding might become available this year. We've had a couple of instances of that in previous years, and so we want to be prepared. So we're looking at prices for trying to get that uh, filtration system mm -hmm. identified, and then we get the funds. There is. Um... $10 million that's been approved for school security. Uh, that was press, I haven't read the whole thing, but the press release came in. So that's uh, something also that we're looking at from a facility standpoint. We talked a little bit about school security. We also talked about um, 
the ongoing efforts to get money back from FEMA. Uh, mm-hmm. It's still in the process. That's the good thing. Um, and the it's so funny because I can't remember Steve's last name either. It's bothering me, <laughs> um, but it's, we don't need to you know go there. Uh, there were there was another specific thing that oh like the, the professional development is going to be taking place for our maintenance staff to be able to do the glycol in the pipes oh, yeah, themselves, which is a very um, significant uh, support for our district. Uh, mm-hmm. One, it makes us sustainable. Two, it saves us an incredible amount of money as long as we do it properly. And thank goodness that John was aware of this as a issue and checked and realized that we were deficient before we had a problem. Right, right. John has uh, really kept on top of a lot of things and uh, including bringing Steve Horton, the uh, clerk of the works. Into the- <laughs> <laughs> had to throw that in there. That was a nice, yeah. smooth way to do it. Wow. All right, so. Uh, Education committee. Yes. Uh, we're not meeting this month. There was too, too, there were too many things going on. So we'll resume again in July. So we'll have more information in July. Good. Policy committee also postponed their meeting last week and we'll be meeting in July. Okay, great. And uh, finance committee? Finance has got postponed our meeting. Or- <laughs> <laughs> June's busy. <laughs> no, we met on a, finance wanted to postpone the meeting. Yeah. <laughs> we met on the 16th and um, according to my notes, uh, we looked at the year end balance. Um, 245k may be left at the end of the year. It costs 225k for retiree buybacks, but we're not going to be able to pay the retiree buybacks because of the cash flow issue and um, because of the uh, the food, the overage in the food service. Right. We have to not spend certain amounts of money from the budget because we went over in that revenue area. So then we discussed where some of the shortfalls were is in insurance. Uh, food services and payroll and then we talked about um, the as far as cash that we owe and we then we talked about um, the cash needed and you know when it was needed in order to maintain a positive cash flow balance so we still don't know for sure uh, exactly what we're going to end up with at the end of the year uh, we'll, we'll be told that at next month's meeting. How much Carrie's doing a lot of juggling to make yeah, things work. Sure. But Carrie is the guardian of the vault, so uh, she'll make sure everything happens. Okay. Um, we also talked about the, sped, the special education trust fund, and uh, there's about 255k left in that. So I don't know how much there'll be at the end of the year, but it's not going to be. The 75k that we put in, I mean, it won't be completely depleted. Uh, we talked a little bit about uh, tuition for um, non-resident students and some of the things that we would have to look at in order to uh, determine what what that cost factor would be. Uh, things like ATC courses, adequacy aid, transportation, special ed, those kinds of things. So we're going to have a, an ongoing discussion about that when we have the time. And when Carrie's not doing an audit, we'll try to collect the data that we need to do to figure out what to propose to the board in terms of a tuition rate if we're going to have one. Uh, Carrie also went over a, um, a proposal to uh, cap the workers' compensation at 10%. It's a three-year contract. And um, what that would do is ensure that our workers' comp didn't exceed 10%. There were some times in the past where it had been 15, one time 15%, and other times 10%. Uh, recently, it was below 10%, but what this would do is keep it from going over for the next uh, three years. Yeah, she said she wanted to present that to us when she gets back from 
believe she's on vacation right now. Mm -hmm. So anyway, the, work, the finance committee did support that. So whenever she presents it, the finance committee will support it. Anybody have anything else to add? That was a good, uh, good summary. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, do you have anything on the wellness committee? Other than they ate everything that was put before them. <laughs> <laughs> All right, very good. Um, and goals committee. Is that uh, not meeting until August. Okay, good. All right, very good. Um, well, we're up to public comments too. Every meeting should go. To this, this yeah. All right, I'll put the um, public comments uh, policy back on the screen. Um, again, same rules as last time. First, last name, town of residence. Uh, make sure you know the policy and uh, use the hand raise feature at the bottom of your screen to be acknowledged. All right, I'm not seeing anybody. Okay, very good. Thank you, Nick. And then on to board matters. And uh, in, in this past week, in the effort to try to deal with some issues that came to the board uh, from the public, and then in our efforts to try and respond, we had a number of uh, right to know procedure uh, slip ups, I guess. And I'll raise my hand as being led in there. I, I did one of them. I did a, a reply all to uh, an email from another member uh, of, of our board. And uh, it, it's, it's easy to do, but we, we all realize that it's not something that we should continue, should continue to do. So uh, we put that on the agenda just to begin to re-educate ourselves, remind ourselves that uh, you know the, these are important issues. And it's, well, it's really hard in the electronic age. You know, we're so used to using email for everything, but right to know law is an important foundation of our of our, uh, of our our legal system in the state. And so it's something we need to pay attention to. Um, <clears throat> we we do have a the, uh, I have an offer from the attorney from the school board association to come and speak to us at some point. And so uh, I'm gonna see if we can uh, schedule something for, uh, for that person to come in and give us an opportunity to ask questions about uh, any number of policies that we might be aware of, but maybe not have complete clarity on. Get that schedule. He's going to come in. Hopefully, he has like a nice little opening because some of us might not even know the questions to ask. <laughs> I was just thinking that. <laughs> well, well, we could always assign ourselves some homework to take a look at some of those documents that Nick always downloads mm -hmm. from the webinars. Right. And, you know, it's, it, it can be hard to find time in our busy lives, but a quick review of that when we know that there's someone scheduled to come in might help us all to be prepared. Is there a cost associated with this? Will cost us anything associated with having the uh, NHSBA come here? Uh, no, I don't. I don't believe it will cost us anything. We're, we're already members, and we we pay an annual fee. I'm pretty sure it's covered under that, but I will clarify. Besides that, there's webinars and actual attendees. You can actually attend some of these things. Okay, uh, I'm fairly familiar with uh, 91A. So I'm not sure that there's a, a lot that I could do except get into discussion with the attorney about case law because the RSA is quite clear, but there's case law that under underlies that. And uh, uh, if the attorney's aware of the case law, then I'd probably get in discussion with that, but otherwise. Well, you know, I've already mentioned to uh, at least a few people that uh, those uh, annual 
kid or law conferences that you have attended so uh, you know rigorously over the years. I'm sure that's where you've learned at least some of what you know. You're obviously a very important resource to the board on those issues, but there's no reason the rest of us can't also, you know, try and get a little bit more up to speed on. Absolutely. All right. That's another board matter, um, and probably should be later. Ruben, can you update us on staffing and how staffing is going as far as gaps and hiring? Well, I didn't prepare for that entirely. I can give you a rough, rough. Um, idea. Um, so we have at the elementary school, we have uh, several two to three positions that we need to hire at Jeffrey grade school um, in the area of elementary education. Um, special education here at the middle school and high school, we have several openings. So that's the both learning centers uh, in terms of learning centers middle school and high school, as well as, I believe, um, uh, special ed case managers. Um, we have some associates. We have a need for instructional associates, mostly at the elementary schools, uh, mostly at RMS. RMS staffing from a teacher standpoint is pretty good. They're going to need to now um, hire a preschool teacher um, with Courtney Catholic's resignation. That was what she was going to do. So that has been posted and uh, moving forward with that uh, and hunt for nurse, a nurse there as well, but we're well on the path of interviewing um, at RMS. So um, at, for other positions, well, we're gonna need to hire a writing teacher, sixth grade and a Like we're going to need a health teacher because we'll be looking to move the health teacher who is certified as an English language arts teacher into that realm um, through that process. So that's what that's what it appears that we have right now. I think that's middle school, high school. Um, so we got we have several that we need to continue to look for. Special ed is is the big one. Okay. Um, I ask because this is a good time for you to be able to hire quickly without waiting for uh, board meetings to approve. And I would be okay with giving you um, the leeway for the time frame to hire without the board approval, uh, and wait for meetings so that you could have immediate hire. Um, but I'm so I'm. I would like to offer that, but I'm not sure the time frame that we should that we should offer. Um, I would like to remind the board that hiring is a board's responsibility. There's a check and balance. We cannot nominate anyone we want to to hire them, and the superintendent okay, cannot hire anyone unless he nom unless they're nominated by him. Right? So there's a check and balance there. However, having said that, I spoke with my daughter in New York. She's a special ed teacher. She said, they're going bananas in New York. They, get, they got bounties on yeah. special ed teachers. Mm -hmm. um, she makes more money than probably she's anybody on this board. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and she's just, she's a, you know, she's a special ed teacher, but she's got uh, all kinds of certifications. But anyway, um, getting back to you, to the, to the point you made, and I would make an exception to that in this case. I would support giving the superintendent to immediately hire anybody he can get as a special ed teacher. Uh, we put a, we increased their salary a thousand dollars to try to you know, ease the uh, ability to get some, but apparently that's not working as well as we had hoped. So yeah, I would support giving the superintendent to, authority and and uh, I would say that giving me authority until um, September 1st but the board the board can review it at any time so if we feel like reviewing it in the next board meeting ask him how he's doing with hiring and if it looks like he's got his special ed then he loves it. that's what would be my two cents I don't know what everybody else does 
Thank you for that language. So I'll second. Thank you for that language. So make a motion, because you can't make a motion, right? Okay. Can you make a motion on it? I could make a motion. I thought oh, you had. You have a language. So the motion will be to uh, extend hiring privileges to the superintendent without the board approval to, to September 1st um, with a $1,000 sign-in bonus for special education teachers. I heard it. I love it. Well, we that's it? in the contract. It's in the contract. Okay. It's already there? Okay. Yeah, it's not a sign-on bonus, but it is added. It's a, it's a it differential. Is. So they're 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 when they're at the same step as the teacher, they get. So it's already there. Yeah. It sounds so good to keep adding money. <laughs> <laughs> the budget doesn't think so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was say, uh, the finance <laughs> committee has a different. But it sounds good. <laughs> Paul's had a conversation with the budget lately, and the conversation says the budget doesn't really feel that good. <laughs> yeah, don't <laughs> don't feel blame it right on the finance committee. Okay, this was a contract that was oh, negotiated with JREA and the voters. No. I the legislative body approved it. We didn't approve it. So it's a good contract. So what I'm hearing is the motion is uh, providing the superintendent uh, temporary hiring authority for special education for the area of special education up to September with the understanding that the board can uh, revisit, okay. revisit this decision or conversation at other board meetings. Yeah. yeah. And then Charlie seconded that. Yes. Is that how that went? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, any, any further discussion? All right, then all in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Okay. Thank you, Lisa. Can, can I do one more? Yes. Okay. I'd like to look at the Wait July. Wait a second, we'll have a discussion. Can we sit with okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, You'll like this one. Um, uh, can we look at the July calendar for school for board meetings and make a decision on whether we have two back to back in the middle of July where not everybody's here or have just one in July and adjust our calendar for July? Currently, the, it's the 11th and the 18th. And when are you on, when are you out with them? I no. gotta look again, but I think, <laughs> no. yes, I right know, now. I just, it got changed. So uh, I don't know. I think, here's my, here's a thought is that um, a lot of the work that we have to do during this month is, uh, or even during the summertime is hiring. And so, um, we can always call some, some, you know, see if we have a forum we can come together and hire those non-special ed teachers at different times. We'll still have the committee meetings going on. The education committee is going to, people are going to want to go to that anyway. Even the board will be in the audience, but um, I would imagine. So keeping it the 18th, if you were going to go down to one, giving a little more time so that, you know, the July 4th week, mm -hmm. Because uh, we'll have started well, we'll have something to report out on during that time frame about ESY and um, summer tutoring and all that kind of stuff going on, which hasn't begun. We'll begin at on the fifth, and we'll also have an HR manager in place at that time too. Which and we're hoping to have the job fair, and hope and give us time to get that job right. fair developed, advertised, mm -hmm. and to occur. Yeah. So I'm okay with not doing the 18th. I'm a little bit leery about stretching anything into August because it's prior to start of school and it's a time frame when we want to make sure that there's a readiness for all of the things we have to do in the area of PD, in the area of school start facilities. I think Ruben was saying to keep the It 18th. has to be the 18th, I thought he said. Get rid of the, <laughs> the 11th. 11th. What? I think Ruben's recommending we or his if, suggestion, yeah. if we were to get rid of one, he, he suggested we get rid of the 11th and keep the 18th. And we better just check on something real fast. Well, the 18th is followed up by the first, which is two weeks. That gives us one, two, three, it's four weeks between that now and the next. Summer vacation. No. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> I raised this. Uh, question earlier before we started our uh, non-public media. <clears throat> I'm a member of a trip that's 
plan between the 8th and the 18th, which basically keeps me uh, unavailable for both of those, uh, both the 11th and the 18th. And uh, that's just the way it goes, but I regret it. You know, to miss two I guess I'd rather miss just one meeting, right? And if, well, if Ruben calls us to hire for getting a quorum, you best show up then. It's before the 11th. Yeah, well, there you go. <laughs> yeah, there you go. So you're shooing for that at least. Yeah. So yeah, it's, keep the, it's the week of the 25th that I wouldn't want to have a meeting. Right. So you wouldn't? Okay. So I'll make a motion that we uh, eliminate the July 11th school board meeting and simply have a formal school board meeting on the 18th. I second that. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Uh, any discussion? Yes. I think that waiting four weeks before our next board meeting and then having one two weeks after that is a large gap. And I would rather see us meet on the 11th, which is in one, two, three weeks. And then again on the August 1st, which is three weeks after the 11th. So that's from my perspective, I, I think that, you know, Cutting, we'll, we'll trying we'll to have an equal distance. If we, but does that give us enough time to get the um, job fair in order, get all those interviews so we can try to line that up a little bit better so we can well when is the job fair that's what we, hit, we haven't planned it yet yeah so that's why we were saying the 18th because we want to be able to have the job fair relatively close if not on the same day so we could extend offers more rapidly yeah Instead that of makes sense do we want to extend offers without references i mean how would that yeah, it depends what they have for references. Yeah, you, I mean, you might be right. It might be that just might be too much to do all at one time. We might have to check references and that's, so forth. It's sketchy know. to have people working with kids without having the references from nature. Right, it might be sketchy. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I'm I feel great about the equity of changing it to the 11th, mm -hmm. amending my motion to say the 11th. That sounds equitable. I'm still second it, but I can't make it the 11th. <laughs> So the motion would be to hold a meeting on the 11th, but not on the 18th. Uh, the next one would be on the 1st. So Lisa's motion, Kim seconded. Same. So we've got a motion of the same motion and second. So thank you for the discussion. And Charlie, your comments. Any more discussion? Then all those in favor? Uh, Aye. 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 Okay. Motion carries. Uh, I, I keep saying seven zero zero, but it's, I realize it's six zero zero. I was going to say something. Figured he do. Yeah. 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 Right. Right. Yeah. Question. Just wanted to bring it up. Don't know if it's a moot point or not. You guys were discussing. Um, hiring authority for Ruben. And I guess just as a reminder, you did have a previous motion for non-professional staff hiring authority. That's gonna lapse at the end of the year. And I didn't know if that was anything that needed to be revisited or not. So not, just wanted to bring it up as a reminder. All right, Charles. It's the superintendent has authority for non-professional staff. The only thing the board cannot, cannot has authority to hire is professionals, quote professionals. So uh, as a board, our, we're the only ones who can hire professionals, superintendents can hire everybody else. Yeah, I think actually what we said was hourly staff. And so that ran into SAU positions during that time frame. Yeah. So we'll keep it at, I think we're in good order at the SAU at this point now that we have HR coming our way. So is, we keep the, the people who would be in the JRSSA as it's, but still report out who we hire. Now, if, if uh, Lisa should request a third, I, think <laughs> just, uh, I like the second one. I'm not going <laughs> to. I make a motion to adjourn. Second.
Is that one? Yeah. We, we, um, so how no. are we oh, going to do this? We, we want to move to uh, move back to non-public. We want to go into non-public, yeah. We can move back to non-public? Yes. Okay. okay. So we need a motion to move back to non-public, right? Yeah. Motion to move back to non-public. For personnel. For, for, for personnel. personnel. Okay. Thank you. And do we have a second? Second. Okay, all those in favor? Do we need a roll call vote to go into non public? All right, Christine? Yes. Charlie? Lisa? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Paul? Yes. And I say yes. So 600, we'll go into non public. 